Hey guys, welcome to Technability. I'm Verge. What we have here today is an HTC One running CM10.2, which is Android Jelly Bean 4.3. See that right there? 4.3. Go ahead and click and get that little Jelly Bean right there. And of course, we have iOS 7 Beta 4 running on an iPhone 5. So both of these are running obviously on their respective latest and greatest platform. Uh, Beta 4 was just released a few days ago after a little bit of a layoff um, due to the whole intruder issue with the developer site and the HTC One is running 4.3 which Signage and Mod Team give them credit even though it's an unofficial version uh, have released for various devices including the HTC One. So right off the bat uh, just to get started here you can see in terms of scrolling through the uh, app drawer here or just scrolling through the home screen is very smooth, very quick, immediate response to your touch. Obviously, you get the same here with iOS 7. Uh, if you swipe to the left, you're not going to get anything. Let me actually just go ahead and zoom in here on this. So swiping to the left isn't going to get you spotlight anymore. Now that's done by swiping down. Uh, and with Android, obviously, you can set up a Google search widget uh, for Google Now. Let's see, do I have, you know, what happens is when you install GAPS with this device, apparently it doesn't come with search, uh, which you could, you know, download it through the Play Store, not really much of an issue. And we're going to go and do that right now here. So let's just go ahead and type in search. Okay. You can see the network is pretty fast. It says 4G up there. Uh, it says 4G, but I don't know if that's necessarily LTE. Uh, we'll run a few speed tests here along the way. And in terms of the, I, uh, the iPhone, I'm running on... Um, I'm tethering through this, so it's basically running on the same network. All right, we'll do speed test. You can see the keyboard; it's responsive. Okay, so the keyboard's super responsive. The network speeds are pretty fast. It's a fairly stable ROM. I mean, I've heard issues with supposedly issues with Bluetooth and whatnot, but in terms of just overall use thus far, uh, it's fairly fast. And with iOS, obviously. Um, you got your folders here, which have that nice little cool animation that uh, you see now baked in before it wasn't zooming in and zooming out. And now it's actually panning to the left uh, to get the rest of your apps. So you can have a second row of apps here. And if I just go ahead and take an icon, for example, and drag it in here, or maybe not, right? Let's drag that in here and we create a folder. So, fairly simple, right? Okay, go home. And with Android, obviously, if you take an icon, you drag it into another icon, you create a folder. So, it's super fast. You can see right there. And if I take a widget, for example, and I move it here, I can move it around and it'll actually re uh, organize all my apps. I could resize it and whatnot as well. So, let's see, we got Google Search here. Okay, now here are the notifications letting you know that you just downloaded these apps. Okay, now I could just go ahead and push this button right here and swipe them all away. Also with CM10, because it's a very customized or customizable version of stock Android, you get these toggles, which is really cool. GPS, um, and you could set that up to what you, whatever it is you like through the settings, which we'll go through here. You could see if you go to launcher, um, there's the app drawer right there. If you go to home screen, there's home screen options. You could change the transition effects. I believe it's going to redraw as soon as I go back. Um, you have uh, lock screen features, uh, you know, to change the, the, the shortcuts on the lock screen here, which I'll show you how those work. Okay, you can see there's shortcuts here. So the lock screen's improved on 4.3. It's just a little bit, again, a little bit smoother. I want to go back and use that word. You get the camera right there. Um, I can go ahead and just unlock. And with iOS, obviously, uh, the lock screen is completely changed <clears throat> with iOS 7. Uh, if you swipe up here, you get the cam uh, the quick the control center, you swipe down, you get the notification center, you swipe here, you get the camera, okay, swipe to the left, and I unlock the phone. Very simple process, right? Yep. All right, so let's get out of here and show you guys how this transition effect works. So again, CM10 gives you, or CM Cyanogen Mod in general, gives you a lot of customizations in terms of options that you're not going to get with stock Android, uh, which really just separates this ROM with other stock ROMs. Paranoid Android's a good stock ROM, but CM10 just kind of has that extra... Uh, I don't know, that extra added flavor that you don't get with other ROMs. They really perfected the experience, and that's why you see early builds coming out that are so stable, such as this one, uh, because they've done such a good job of perfecting it, so to speak. Uh, now, in terms of the dialers, let's just go ahead and check out the dialers here. Okay. 
see the dialers, um, both super responsive. If I exit out, Android exit out's a little bit uh, slightly faster. Again, that's because it's CM10, it's taken out a lot of the bloat, the extra heaviness that you get with any iteration of Android. You're not gonna get with CM, it's super duper fast. Uh, let's check out the camera here. So you can see the camera quality. Okay, and then if I swipe over this way, I can see my picture. Click on my picture. If you have third-party apps and you want to share, they'll all add right there. If I just kind of swipe in, I can swipe up and delete the picture. I can undo the deletion. comes right back. Go home. Um, with the uh, with iOS 7, uh, you got your options here, obviously. Um, video, photo, square, panorama. If I just take a picture here. I have filters as well. You can see all those filters. So I could change my filters. Okay, here's my photo right here. If I want to share it, I just click on this option right here and it gives you various options to share. Now I can share multiple photos here if I wanted to, but there's where I could share it to. Third party apps aren't integrated with this, so you, you get what they give you basically. You can see zooming in, zooming out, and then if we exit out of here and head back to the gallery, you can see if I just kind of uh, Pinch in. You can pinch in pictures and it's got this nice little cool effect here. So interesting, right? Okay, exit out of there. Go back here to Android's gallery. And you could see in terms of sharing, again I showed you guys how it works. Uh, this is the edit button right here. So you can edit your picture, you got filters and whatnot, all sorts of different cool little things you could do. Uh, that's uh, something that you get with Android as well as CM obviously you exit out now if I want to multitask I just go ahead and hold down the home button and I could just kind of swipe them away one by one or you see this button right here could push it remove all the apps with iOS if I hold down the home button I get Siri which I didn't want to do all right here's the multitasking and I could just kind of swipe them away as many as I'd like at once including I think up to three because that's how many you can see on one screen I could just kind of swipe them away and then go home from there. All right, now in terms of the browsers, both are really fast. Obviously, you got Safari, you got WebKit, which is Android's browser. Let's go ahead and just load up technability.com here. Okay, so there's technability.com, there's technability.com. And you can see both screens, obviously, very clear in terms of rendering text and just overall clarity and brightness. Um, if I pinch here, you can see how smooth the pinch zoom is. Pinching here on the iPhone, obviously, industry, industry standard in terms of, in terms of pinch zoom. Uh, if I zoom in on that picture, if I zoom in on this picture, you can see the quality right there of both pictures. Zoom back out, zoom back out. Okay, here are the tabs, all right, for Android, stock Android, here are the tabs for iOS. So swipe them away, swipe them away. Now, what uh, what they've done here with iOS 7 is they've taken a page out of Google Chrome, which uses those tabs to um, utilize various different web pages that you're on. So uh, they've taken a page from Google Chrome, which is great. I mean, it, that's, that's something that they needed in terms of just kind of making the tabs a little bit more fresh and new. All right, let's go ahead and check out the messaging application here and show you guys how this works. Okay. Okay. All right, obviously you see both respective keyboards. Both super responsive, immediate to my touch. iOS still has slight edge in this regard, but it's nothing too crazy. Again, it's not like it's that much of a difference, especially when you're dealing with a larger screen phone with Android. Uh, you'll be fine in terms of in terms of uh, using the keyboard. Sharing options right up here, you can see all the various sharing options with iOS. Uh, you got the various sharing options. Now with iOS, you have gesture base now. So if I just kind of swipe over here, or if I cancel, let's say I'm in a uh, text message and I swipe over, I can get back to my text message panel. So a nice little feature. You don't have gesture here on uh, Android, but there are third-party apps that do activate those type of features. So you can check those out. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead and check out Google Now and Siri. What is 3 times 3 minus 2 divided by 6 to the third power? Hmm. Let me think. It looks like the answer is approximately 8.66667. They both gave me different answers. 
Who is the President of the United States? Barack Obama Checking. is the President of the United States of America. Okay. The answer is Barack Obama. Turn on Bluetooth. Turn on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is already on. Okay, Google now still recognizing because it doesn't do that. Let's see, they're both kind of tripping. All right, let's exit out and try this again. Set reminder, 3 p.m., go to doctor. Here's your reminder for today at 3 p.m. Okay, Shall see. I create it? Google now. Google now says that I have to turn on, uh, turn on Google now to set reminders, which apparently I haven't done. But you could see both are pretty similar in their and what they do. Uh, Siri has been improved with iOS 7, but Google now continues to, to improve as well. So both really solid in that regard. Uh, let's check out both calendars here. Okay, you can see the calendars are both very minimal, and you know, obviously, iOS is now going with that minimal look. So, uh, the calendars are very similar. All right, you got you know reminders and whatnot you could set. Uh, you got obviously a nice looking calendar here on iOS because their GPU acceleration is just really good. Uh, but in any case, it's still they're both still very solid. Uh, let's see, we could check out the. Um, clock. Where's the clock here on iOS 7? There we go. Okay, so we open both clocks. Again, very minimal on Android, very minimal on uh, iOS. So if I want to go ahead and do the stopwatch and do uh, set an alarm, I can just go back to the clock here, set an alarm. You can see how that works. And with iOS, same thing. If I want to set an alarm, I just push the plus. You got that nice little thing there, which they've had for a while now. So both, again, very similar in that regard. Uh, the notifications, you can see those are that's the quick settings. The quick settings you can just kind of swipe down with two fingers, but you can see the regular notifications. Now I could swipe away notifications here on Android. I can't on iOS. I got to use that little X, which bugs me because again, if you have fat fingers, uh, that little X becomes a little bit cumbersome. So I would like the ability to be able to swipe things away, especially now given that they're using gesture based. But in any case, it's still nice looking. Uh, they got the whole transparent thing going on. If you look at the back, kind of looks like what Mego used to look like. And obviously you have the quick settings here, and you can see that. The, the the or excuse me the control center which has that little uh, inertia effect coming from the bottom not customizable you get what they give you uh, which you know Wi-Fi airplane mode Bluetooth etc auto rotation music and whatnot so uh, they, they you get what they give you but it's not like what they give you is is bad so here with the quick settings with CM you can customize this put whatever you want remove whatever you want with stock Android you can't but you can see how you can access that with two fingers or you can just swipe over to the right for some. Uh, again, this is customizable. You don't have to have it swipe from the right, but you can set it up that way. And that's a CM feature exclusively, so uh, something to look out look out for. Here's Apollo, which is basically just a music player that comes with CM. Yeah, you know, it's kind of laggy. I'm, I'm pushing next, and it's not really doing it immediately, but yeah, you know. Not going to complain that much about that. And obviously here you can, if I had any music on this, you can play and pause and fast forward and rewind songs directly from the control center, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, I haven't really downloaded any apps for this, so I can't really demonstrate third-party apps. I'll do that in another video. I just wanted to go through basically the gist of the operating system. Uh, if I take a widget here, I could just place it anywhere as such. Obviously, you don't have widgets here with iOS 7. Probably never will, but you do have something kind of like widgets here with the notification uh, center stocks and whatnot and you can customize that through the settings oh uh, you can also change Siri's voice to a male voice through the settings uh, you also have the the dynamic wallpapers let's show you guys the difference of that so if I go to live wallpapers here and click on phase beam set wallpaper if I go to wallpapers here dynamic okay set it and forget it all right so set that okay so you can see how similar they are they took a page from Google in the, in this dynamic wallpaper situation let's go ahead and pick up both show you guys you know and they have the whole parallax 3D feature, which there's third-party apps for that on Android. And you can see spotlight scrolling from the bottom. Okay. Both pretty fast. I mean, both super fast. Not pretty fast, actually. I take that back. I mean, people talk about Android being kind of stuttery and laggy, but really it's it's good enough. I mean, especially with this build of CM10 with 4.3, uh, they've added open GP, uh, GL, GPU acceleration, so you can see just how smooth and quick that is. Um, Let's see, you can see the contacts are actually 
right, you can see how that works nice quick fast and smooth okay nice little layout um, folders obviously we already went through that so basically I just wanted to go through the OS um, as opposed to going through third-party apps and how those run on both platforms because that's something that's really subjective and plus you know with iOS they get a lot of the apps first so uh, they, they, they do sometimes get the edge in, in terms of third-party apps and the functionality and the smoothness and fluidity of third-party apps but for the most part it's still fairly solid on Android and recently they actually passed Google in the amount of apps so even though there are a lot of useless ones uh, there's a lot of great apps for Android as well and obviously the same can be said for iOS um, other than that, guys, you know, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or concerns about any of these two platforms, go ahead and ask me below. Don't forget to subscribe to Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech, and check out our website, www.technability.com. All right, thank you guys for watching.